Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO module. Today's topic for training is integration. Integration from FICO module to the other modules in SAP system. An SAP system basically is an ERP software which you already must know and it works the best and provides the best benefits once it is integrated with the other modules or the other departments in an organization. So this is the one of the most complex activity of any implementation project. All the functional application components are to be integrated to get the desired result. That means that you have to integrate the other modules with each other as per their requirement like the FICO module has to be integrated with the MM module means the finance and accounts department has to be integrated with the purchase department similarly the purchase department should be integrated with the sales department the sales department has to be integrated with the finance and accounts department same way the HR department has to be integrated with the finance and accounts department. So these way every department has to be integrated because wherever they are linked to each other, wherever they need the integrations to be done. So this is the best feature of the standard SAP software. Integration within the module will be done automatically and the intra module integration is an upfield task for the implementation team. In the process of integration, the FICO module consultant has a greater role to play as the most of the things as a part of the integration flows in the SAP FICO module only. The finance module is linked up with most of the other modules. In today's training, we will learn how to integrate the FICO module with the other modules like material management and sales and distribution module. In the project implementation, the activities regarding or relating to the respective modules will be taken care by the respective module consultants. Here we will try to deal with the main activities to take up the integration part. So today's training basically contains overview on the integration of FI and MM module, procure to pay cycle and the configuration overview. So moving up to this, before that most of the manufacturing business logics is stands for three things. Whenever a manufacturing organization works, they have three things which has to be looked after. One is buy, second is make and the third is sale. So whatever they manufacture, before that they have to purchase as a raw material. Once they purchase, then it has been manufactured and ultimately it has been sold to the end party. So it means an organization buy a raw material or a product from a vendor. Then he makes from this raw material product to finished material or products and then he sells the finished material or products to a customer. So these three things that is buy, make and sell in that three parts the three different modules are integrated to each other. If you try to understand and concentrate you will understand that more clearly. So, the first part when the organization buy a raw material or a product then it's coming into the warehouse stock which is a part of MM module that is material management part and because of the organization has bought something from a vendor he also has to make the payment to the vendor. So there comes the role of FI module from where the payment or the invoice processing of the vendor is processed. The second part comes up is when the organization makes 
the raw material to finished goods. So here the organization processes the raw material for the manufacturing of the finished goods. At that time, the organization needs a subcontractor vendor or maybe who will be who will make the subcontracting processes or even maybe that within the organization the manufacturing can be done from the raw material to the finished goods so again there will be certain financial impacts of consumption of raw material and then manufacturing of finished goods so here the raw material gets reduced and the finished goods gets increased as per the quantity manufactured so then the process from raw material to finished material again it goes to the mm module within the mm module one material is reduced because of the consumption on the another hand the finished goods will get increased as a part of the production of finished goods and the organization again in this case if they have used any vendor as a subcontractor then they have to make payment to that subcontractor as well otherwise it will be a part of only the mm module only so this is one of the another part where manufacturing from raw material to finished goods has been done and when we move to the third part when the organization sell the finished goods to the customer they make or they have to proceed the sales process that is making a sales order then the delivery and the billing is done and it goes to st module which is sales and distribution module at the time the finished goods stock is decreased when you make a sale from the warehouse and it goes to the mm module so automatically the finished goods are lying with the purchase department and when a sales department will be making a sale obviously the sales department has to integrate with the purchasing department so here comes the integration of sales department with purchasing department and at the time of finished goods the stock is decreased from the warehouse again later on when we move on for selling the material to the customer a customer will pay for this finished material so once you receive the payment from the customer here comes the role of fi module so you can see in this particular third part there are two different modules there are two different things are integration one is the sd and mm module integration is there and on the another hand there is an integration of sd and fi module where the customer payment has to be received from the finance and accounts department so we'll be first dealing with the integration of fi and mm module and later on we'll move to fi and sd module how that integration can be done so now moving on to the sales sorry fi and mm module part the mm stands for material management and fi stands for financial accounting FI and SD module is very much integrated with MM module. Necessary to understand the MM and SD flow where MM and SD is a part of the implementation. So the MM, the MM module is a very important integration with the FI module. Whatever activities which takes place in the MM module will have its financial implications and ultimately has to be impacted to the finance and accounts module and wherever the mm and sd module is a part of any of the project it is very important to understand the mm and sd flow how the process flow moves on so as to have a better understanding of the fi integration with these two modules so the purchasing activities of an organization dealt by a specialized department or a separate purchasing organization as per the requirement of the project the main organizational unit involved in the process is the purchase department now moving on to the before the integration we'll first try to understand what is the procure to pay process this is one of the most important processes for any organization because ultimately they have to purchase something and then they have to manufacture and have to sell it 
to as an as a finished goods so procure to pay ensures automation of entire procurement to pay process through a defined workflow as per the set business rules mm module means procure to pay process also known as p2p so this procure to pay process is also known as p2p process or even is known as the purchasing process so in this we will be studying about any transaction in mm with respect to the material movement because purchase department basically means movement of material so any movement which happens is happens with a movement type in sap each material movement like goods receipt against the purchase order or goods issued to the purchase production order maybe a scrapping of goods could be there transfer of goods can be a part of it and even goods issue for sale or initial upload each of those movement of material have a different movement type as defined into the sap system and this is a basic standard sap practice thus the various account assignment are linked to the mm movement type so procure to pay solution ensures automation of the entire procurement to payment process so a defined workflow workflow as per the set business rules it enables the organization to gain control and visibility over the entire life cycle of a transaction from the movement goods or services are ordered to the final invoicing providing deep insight into the budget and the monetary commitments as well it can even that the finance department can insist on internal spending controls and organizations can ensure substantial cost saving benefits with the help of procure to pay process so let's see what is this process is all about so the procure to pay cycle is on your screen where you can see from number 1 the first is determination of requirements and then the source of determination then we move to the vendor selection po processing order monitoring then goods receipt and invoice receipt and finally the payment is done to the vendor so as a part of the procure to pay cycle the first part is determination of requirement so in this the requirement has to be analyzed what is the requirement what has to be purchased it's basically the creation of purchase requisition has to be made in the system that means a request has to be raised so here we make a request which is known as purchase requisition in sap which has to be raised as per the requirements on the particular organization what kind of a material is needed how much of the quantity is required that requisition has to be made as a part 1 the second part is source determination so under the second part the organization look after who is the source who have raised the request for the purchase how much quantity has to be purchased whether it is right to purchase that much of a quantity so an inquiry is made on that and if it is find okay that the requirement is fine then the price comparison is also done and later on we move on to the vendor selection so under the vendor selection we look for the vendors we make ask for the quotations from the vendors and again the quotations are reviewed have been compared with the other vendor quotations and then a particular vendor is decided so as to give the request for the purchase so then we move to the next is the fourth that is po processing so once a vendor has been decided that with which vendor the quantity has to be purchased then a purchase order is issued to the vendor 
The purchase order is issued to the vendor so as to decide how much quantity has to be purchased. So it consists of all the details related to the vendor. What is the quantity? What is the material? What will be the quality? What will be the price? What will be the timeline? In what period they will be delivering the goods? So everything is mentioned in that purchase order. That is what has been issued and it has been approved by the authorities, by the approval authority which is there in the SAP system because in SAP you cannot raise a purchase order just of your own they have the release strategy mentioned so the release strategy has to be looked after or maybe the purchase order has to be reviewed by the releasing authority carefully and then only they release the purchase order and once a purchase order is issued that has been delivered to the vendor so once the purchase order has been processed the order has to be monitored that in what time period the order will be delivered the timeline and once you receive the delivery you move to the sixth stage that is the goods receipt so this is the another important part in this the goods receipt are made that is known as also as, known as as a gate entry that means you are receiving the goods at your gate of the organization and it has to be received with reference to the purchase order once you receive the goods a material document number and an accounting document number is created after posting into the SAP system so once a goods receipt is done it updates the SAP system with respect to the inventory so the automatically the SAP that particular material will be updated into the SAP system its quantity will be updated its price will be updated and ultimately because of that its financial implications will also be reflected and the different GL accounts which are related to the goods receipt will also be updated into the SAP FICO module so this is now the goods has been received so once the goods have been received now the last part comes up is the invoice verification so after receiving the goods you move on to the invoice verification where there is a three-way invoice verification is done one is that you have raised the purchase order so the goods receipt has to be with reference to the purchase order and even the invoice which has been raised by the vendor has to be on the basis of the purchase order without the reference of purchase order you cannot and you should not receive the goods neither the invoice from the vendor so it has been done in this particular part and once the invoice is received that particular invoice has been punched into the SAP system so once the invoice is punched into the SAP system now it moves up to the last stage that is the payment so we have raised the purchase order we have received the goods now we also have received the invoice from the vendor that how much amount has to be paid then the payment processing has to be done so in this part now per payment purchase uh, payment processing is been made to the vendor and the payment can be made after the payment terms which has been mentioned in the purchase order and it can be made a manual or an automatic processing of the payment as well and once the payment is processed the check informations are been provided to the vendor and the payment is been credited to their account or maybe a manual check can be prepared and can be sent to the vendor so this is the whole cycle which moves on from procure to pay now the most important part comes up is out of these all stages which are those stages where the SAP FI module has to look after where it will be having impacts so you have to understand out of procure to pay where the FI module is integrated so for that we'll be moving up to the next slide
so here is the process steps in nutshell these are your different processes which are done in the sap system the first is a purchase requisition that means a purchase request has to be raised and in this part there is no financial impacts then a purchase order is issued to the supplier again there is no financial impacts these are internal within the sap system just for information perspective they doesn't have any financial impact the financial impacts start from the third process that is the goods receipt so once a goods are received into the sap system or into the organization the system generates the accounting entry and that is in front of your screen it is the inventory account is debited and the grir clearing account gets credited so if you are purchasing any kind of a raw material or goods or material the inventory account is debited but in case you are purchasing any assets assets refers to the fixed assets in that case the asset account is debited into the sap system and the grir clearing account gets credited and then move to the next process is invoice verification so invoice verification means basically looking up to the invoice that whether the invoice has been received and if it has been received its verification has to be done that the invoice details relates to the purchase order or not so it should have the same rate it should have the same quantity so those all things has to be matched or to be verified with the purchase order and then it is to be verified with the goods receipt that whatever the quantity has been reflected in the invoice that much quantity has been received in the organization or not so these two things has to be verified in the invoice verification and once the things are okay then we we go and we post the invoice into the sap system so the invoice posting is done and when we do the invoice posting the journal entry which is created is grir clearing account gets debited and the accounts payable or the vendor ledger gets credited so this is the second financial impact now we move to the third is the payment run so under the payment run now the payment has to be processed to the vendor so once we process the payment to the vendor the transaction we process is f-58 which we have already done in the previous training sessions so in this now when we process the payment to the vendor the transaction which is made is vendor account gets debited and the cash account or cash or bank account will get credited so you can see over here on the goods receipt and the invoice receipt the grir is credited and the grir is debited so ultimately it gets knocked off means it gets set off with each other now the more important question come up is what is this grir account is all about so we'll see that in a while so this is your process steps which been done in the sap system now moving to the next slide is grir which basically refers to goods receipt and invoice receipt so when we go for a goods receipt the grir gets credited and when we go for the invoice receipt the same grir gets debited as we have seen in the last entry over here in the goods receipt part the grir is credited and in the invoice receipt part the grir is debited so this is what the impact in their ledger account is over here there is the credit side and here it is on the debit side so why this happens why we use this grir account the grir account is basically a clearing account it's basically a kind of a temporary account which is used into the sap system so as to take the gap of the g of the goods receipt and the invoice receipt so when you do the confirmation your material account is debited or the respective expense account gets debited and the grir is credited and when 
the transaction set in this account and awaits for the invoice to be posted. Now when the invoice is posted, the GRIR is debited and the vendor gets credited. So you can see where now when both the goods receipt and the invoice receipt are posted, now the GRIR account balance becomes zero. So it is where it is used as a clearing account, as a temporary account between the goods receipt and the invoice receipt. So this is your whole procure to pay cycle is all about and you must know about it because this is one of the most common thing which is asked asked everywhere to you and being a consultant you have to be aware of the procure to pay cycle well which is also known as p2p cycle or the purchasing process as well so now moving up to the next is how we do these configurations or the customizations for the these GL accounts which are reflected into you in the process steps these all GL which has been assigned over here are automatic GL which has to be assigned for the integration purpose into the SAP system. So now we'll be moving up to the next slide so as to see that how these entries which have been generated are automatically generated through the SAP system but before it has been generated we need to customize these accounts into the system so how those integration is done that is what we will be looking after in the next couple of slides so the configuration overview there is only one way where all these assignments are done so there is the path for you and the transaction code obyc or omwb so this is the only configuration path or the way where all the integration between the FI and the MM module is done. So we'll move to that one by one. So you can do the integration only when the MM module is implemented in that particular company code. So assuming that now the company code has the MM module implemented, how will we moving to do these all integration uh, in the SAP system? So will that we will do in, uh, in a while. Before that let's understand what are the different MM transactions done and what are its accounting integrates, integration entries being generated into the system. So moving up to the first as a part of the process uh, which we have discussed a while back the purchase process. Creating the purchase requisition there is no impact on the FI that is the financial accounting part. Creating purchase order again has no impact on the financial accounting part. Moving to the next is the goods receipt against a purchase order. So whenever a goods receipt is done, the movement type 101 is used into the SAP system. And this has been done through the purchase department or through the MM module part. So that's not an activity which we have to look for. What we have to look for is the transaction that has been generated. So the transaction generated is inventory or inventory of raw material is debited and the GRIR is credited. So let's see the transaction or the configuration path we have just seen over here and then probably it will give you more better understanding of uh, the integration which we are about to discuss. So the transaction code used for integration for automatic postings is OBYC. So we can move to the transaction OBYC on the screen. Enter. So in the in screen you can see on the top that the group is there is RMK which refers to material management postings. So this particular screen refers to all the material management postings which has a financial impact. There are huge number of different transactions and every, every transaction has its own different impacts as you can see on the screen provisional differences are there then inventory posting if there is a change in a stock account then a different transaction is used so these different transactions have their their different different implications are on the SAP system and accordingly the system generates the accounting entry so every transaction has got a different movement type and a different behavior by which 
the transactions are generated and it ultimately impacts the SAP FI module also. So you can see over here now is the inventory posting is there. So in a case any kind of an inventory account has to be hit that has to be taken up with the transaction BSX. Similarly if you move on to further if there is any kind of a fret been involved on the material purchase that moves up to the transaction FR1. So these there are number of various common transactions which are used in every organizations. So moving up to the transactions which will be having the financial impacts and we'll see how those integration are done with the MM module. So the first one is goods receipt against a purchase order. So whenever a goods receipt entry is done, the accounting entry which is generated is inventory of raw material is debited and the GRIR should be credited as on the screen to you. This is the basic accounting entry which has to be generated if a raw material is purchased. In case you are not purchasing a raw material or purchasing a semi-finished goods or maybe a finished goods in that case that particular GL should be affected over here and in case there is an asset the asset should be debited. So this has been done with the movement type 101 by the SAP system and even the transaction code for that is MIGO MIGO. MIGO is the transaction code if we execute that on your one of the sessions in the SAP system you can see that So you can see the screen over here. This is the screen how the MIGO MIGO transaction is executed and you can see over here on the screen goods receipt against the purchase order. So over here you need to fill all those details even if you uh, and then the gate entry has been done or the goods receipt has been done into the SAP system. So that is uh, a part of this goods receipt but how these entries are to be assigned so that it will be automatically integrated and an automatic posting has to be done with the SAP FI module. So you can see on the last part there are two different transactions one is BSX and another is WRX. So you need to update these two transaction key with your GL code. How that can be done? You need to go to the transaction that we have discussed about is this OBYC for configuring the accounting maintain automatic posting with the MM module. So in this you can move down and you can see over here the transaction BSX. This BSX transaction is used only for the inventory GL. So whenever you want to want to impact any of the inventory account you have to go to this transaction BSX part. So once you double click onto this BSX you need to give your chart of account. Suppose I given my chart of account enter. So now you can see on the screen there is a chart of account and the transaction is BSX that is inventory posting. Now you can see that every valuation class has a different valuation class are assigned to it. The valuation class has been assigned through the MM module. Now how this has been done and how it has been assigned. Whenever we make a purchase of any raw material, semi-finished goods or a finished goods, those are done with the help of a material and the material code has to be created into the SAP master. So you need to create the material master into the SAP system and when we create a material master for the purchase of that particular material in that we need to assign a valuation class. This valuation class is the term which decides that particular material is a raw material or whether it is a semi finished goods or will it be a finished goods and accordingly depending upon the valuation class assigned to the material master what will be the accounting GL which will be impacted. So for example I am purchasing a raw material so I will be assigning a valuation class of raw material to that particular material master and then here on the BSX transaction I will be assigning the GL of raw material. 
So in that case, that particular values in class of raw material will be automatically impacted to this particular GL of raw material. So this is how you have to do it and you have to assign the GL account as per the different values in class in the transaction BSX. So on the basis of that, your the first entry inventory of raw metal will get debited. Now moving up to the next is WRX. So for the GRIR part over here on the screen, you have to update the next transaction type that is WRX. So now for that we need to move back. We need to move down the screen to search for WRX. So as you move down you will find over here this is screen GRIR clearing account. So here within the transaction WRX you need to double click and once you double click on it it will again take you to the next screen on here you need to assign the GRIR account as you can see. So the GL which has been assigned over here on your screen is the GRIR clearing account which need to be assigned against the values in class. Normally we have only one GRIR clearing account for all the different purchases done in the MM module. So very important point that every accounting entry with respect to a material will have impact on the inventory and that is why it will hit the transaction that is the BSX on the first part. So the most common transactions which are used in the OBC OBYC settings for FI and MM integration is inventory posting that is BSX. So this transaction is used for posting to stock account that is the inventory account and we have seen the previous different accounting entries as well that the debit or the credit on one side the inventory posting GL is used in each and every of the transactions and even I have said that the inventory posting or inventory GL will be used in every transactions in the MM module. In the inventory management in case of goods receipt we have seen that the inventory was debited whereas in the invoice verification it was not been used because the inventory the invoice was been raised with the vendor but apart from that at each and every entries the particular inventory GL has been debited or credited depending upon the kind of a transactions and how the inventory is impacted onto that. So the transactions on the screen are the basic minimum settings that has to be done with the FI and MM module. So the second one is GBB which means the offsetting entry for inventory postings and within the GBB there are different number of transactions which are used as a general modification which we have seen. One is VBR that is for raw metal consumption. And the movement type used for this is 261. Similarly, we have seen BSA that is for initial stock upload. And the movement type used for this is 561. Similarly, for goods receipt against the production order, AUF transaction code is used. So, this is for goods issued against production order and the transaction code used in this case is 101. Then if you move up to the next is VAX that is used for goods issue. For sales and the transaction code used is 601. And even in the same way if you move to the next VNG that is for goods scrapped with the transaction code 551. 
so these are some of the very common general modify modifications which are used within the gbb part for the different transaction and you can see every transaction has been affected depending upon the movement types so the movement type is something which is standard defined by the scp system from the mm module which you don't have to focus much on it with the experience you may be able to understand these things as a movement type part later on but as of now you don't have to go for it the next uh, transaction over here now is prd that is price difference so the price difference arises for materials valued at a standard price in case of all the movements and invoices with a value that differ from the standard price now as per before moving up to prd let's discuss few things more every material master is been maintained with a price what will be the price per quantity for that particular material and the material master has been assigned the price depending upon the standard price has to be maintained or the moving average price has to be maintained so whatever the price which has been maintained in the material master if that particular material movement has been done with a with a different amount and whatever the difference will be with the with the particular material valuation against the standard price that will hit to the price difference account so in the price difference we assign a gl which will take up the differences in the material as per the material master and as per the different purchase order for example if you take like goods received against the purchase order if the purchase order price differ from the standard price which is maintained in the material master in that case the difference between the two will go to the price difference account so one has to take care that whatever the purchase order prices and the material standard price has to be the same or it has to be maintained so that no price or no amount moves to the price difference part so moving up to the next now is wrx wrx basically refers to for the grir account which occurs in the case of goods receipt and invoice receipt against the purchase order these are the only two places where this grir account is used which we have seen even in the earlier part where ultimately the grir account gets gets knocked off and it becomes zero and no values are reflected on that so normally a grir clearing account should not have any balance in its account if the goods receipt and invoice receipt has been done for the particular purchase order now moving up to the next is the purchasing fret account purchasing fret account is where where we put the fret on the purchase for example if you purchase raw material obviously the vendor would be charging the fret amount as well for transportation and all from one place to the to the another place for the organization so whatever the fret amount which has been taken up in the system that has to be taken up through the transaction fre so these are some of the transactions which have been taken up over here as a minimum integration part and the more you can go for is exploring more and more there are different transactions so more you can you can go through different transactions at your end as well but these are the minimum uh, integration points and the transactions which you must be aware of so as to understand the integration of fi and mm how it has been done so that is all about the fi and the mm integration point of view things are you can go through these and have a better understanding of it we'll see you in the next training with the integration of fi and the sd module till then thank